ancient rules. What we're going to be doing today is looking at two shortcuts, one for uh, a function that is a product and one for a function that is a quotient, and we'll look at each of those individually. The first part is the product rule, and this is a shortcut when you have a function, in this case you see f of x, which is actually made up of a product of two other functions, in this case u of x and v of x. And as long as u and v are both differ differentiable functions, then the, uh, the derivative of f of x is equal to the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So again, we have a product. We have a product here, or two factors: the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first, or vice versa. Okay, and that's what this says here. Thus, the derivative of a product of two functions is the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. I know that seems a little confusing, but when you try examples, it's actually quite straightforward. So let's look at some examples. We have two examples here. Here we have two polynomials, 2x cubed plus 3x plus 1 times x squared plus 4. So notice y equals this product. So if we want the derivative of y, which is what this notation says, dy dx is saying take the derivative of y with respect to x. So let's look at the first function. Let's look at problem A. What we're going to do is we're going to take the entire derivative of this piece times x squared plus 4, then take the derivative of x squared plus 4 times this trinomial. And here you can see it here. So the derivative of x squared plus 4, remember, is just 2x. We bring the power down in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, and remember that the derivative of a constant is 0. So the derivative of x squared plus 4 is simply 2x. So the derivative of the second times the first plus the derivative of the first. Again, here we have 2x cubed. The derivative of this, we bring the 3 down in front, 3 times 2 is 6x, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent, getting 6x squared. The derivative of 3x is simply 3. The derivative of any constant is 0, and so we have this function. The rest of this is just multiplying this out, or foiling this out, and then simplifying by combining like terms. And you can look through that at your own leisure. Let's look at problem B. Now we have um, a bit of a larger um, polynomials. But notice here we're trying to find the slope of the tangent, which remembers the same thing as finding the derivative, but at a specific point. What's nice about this is that we have some long polynomials, but since we're looking for a specific value, as soon as we work through uh, the, the product formula, the product rule, we can plug in 1 for x and not have to do any simplification or foiling. So let's look at that. So we have the derivative of the second, which is 3x squared, right here, minus, bring the 2 down in front, so 2 times 4 is 8, x, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So we get 3x squared minus 8x, which is the derivative of the second factor, times the first, plus the derivative of the first factors. We have three factors here with x, so the first one is 12x squared, 3 down in front, subtract 1, plus 10x, 2 down in front, subtract 1, minus 6, which we see there. 12x squared plus 10x minus 6 times the whole second factor right there. So again, practicing a couple of these will make it uh, much easier than it seems. Okay. Now instead of multiplying all this out, which could be a bit of a bear, since we're looking for the slope where x equals 1, we now just plug 1 in here. And remember that wherever x is equal to 1, x to 1 to any power is still 1. So basically I get 4 plus 5 minus 6 plus 5 times 3 minus 5, which is negative 5. Okay, so we go through all of this. And again, I'm not going to do the math here. You can do the arithmetic, and we get an answer of negative 72. The quotient rule um, is a little more involved and we need to be careful. A lot of times when we have new rules in math, um, our brains try to make up our own rules. So it might seem very intuitive that if I have a function which is the 
quotient or a division of two other functions that I could simply take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and, and put them together. And this does not work. This is incorrect. Instead, we have a quotient rule. So if we have a, a function, which is a quotient of two other functions or a fraction of two other functions, u of x divided by v of x, again, where both of these are differentiable, then our derivative of f of x, or f prime x, this is more notation, equals the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. Now it's important that you remember these formulas. You will need to use them on the test. Okay. Again, this is a little bit complicated to begin with. It's a new formula, so you should, you know, that's normal for you to feel a little bit anxious about it. But the more you practice it, the more it will come to you. Okay. Here I've done some shorthand. So it's the num the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. So maybe the shorthand notation can help a little. <clears throat> so notice, let's look at a function that we um, can find the derivative pretty easy. So here we have f of x equals x cubed over x. So the, here we have a quotient, right? Well, we could simplify this quotient to be x squared, right? x cubed divided by x equals x squared. And the derivative of x squared is a very simple derivative, right? We bring the 2 down in front. We subtract 1 from the exponent using the power rule, and we get 2x. So we know what the answer should be to this derivative. Let's plug the quotient into the quotient rule and see how we do. Okay? So again, remember we have the derivative of the numerator times the denominator. The derivative of the numerator is 3x squared times the denominator, which is x. That's the first piece right here, the numerator prime d denominator. Derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So the numerator is x cubed. The derivative of x is simply 1. And then this all goes over x squared. Now we simply multiply out and simplify, and you can see that we do indeed get the same answer, 2 times x. Here's some more problems. I don't see the paw prints, but please, why don't you pause and see if you can solve these. These are a little bit more involved, um, but they're okay. They're not too bad. So try them. Okay, let's go. The derivative of the numerator, notice, would be 2x minus 4 times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, which is just 1, times the numerator, x squared minus 4x. And then that's all over the denominator squared. <clears throat> Again, the numerator, the derivative of the numerator is 2x minus 4 times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, which is just 1, times the numerator on all over x plus 5 squared. And so again, we FOIL this out, we multiply this out, making sure we distribute the negative, so minus x squared plus 4x, and then simplify algebraically. Again, I'm not going to walk through this. You should be able to solve this algebra um, once we get to this point, the, the math. Now let's look at b. Again, we have a formula that has a value in it, the instantaneous rate of change at f of x at x equals 3. Again, another way of saying find the derivative, instantaneous rate of change. And here we have a value, so we can um, stop after we put it into this formula and plug in 3. Again, we're looking for the derivative of the numerator, so 3x squared minus, again, bring the power down, 6x plus 0, so just those parts times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, which is just 2x, times the numerator, all of this, and then all divided by the denominator squared. Ooh. So there's that first part. Again, I'm not going to walk through all of this. we got a FOIL and another multiplication or distribution that we need to multiply through, and then combining like terms, okay? And we get this. Now, they've simplified here. You could have put the 3 in here. Um, before you even foiled or anything, and you should get the correct answer as well. 
but when you plug in x equals 3 at any place along here, notice you get 33 over 25, or um, what's that, 1.32, okay? <clears throat> so here we have the quotient rule to find the derivative of y equals 1 over x cubed. So we get the numerator, again, the derivative of the numerator times the denominator. Well, remember, the derivative of a constant is 0. So this whole first term goes to 0. So we have 0 minus the derivative of the denominator is 3x squared times the numerator, which is 1, all over x to the 6. <clears throat> when we simplify this, we get negative 3 over x to the 4th. If you remember that um, a negative exponent means to reciprocate it, that we could have rewritten 3, uh, y equals 1 over x cubed as simply x to the negative 3. If we did this, we could have just used the power rule, which is to bring the exponent down in front, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, and we'd get 3x, negative 3x to the negative 4, which is the same answer we have here. Now remember that marginal revenue Marginal revenue is the money you get for selling another item. Okay, so if I'm looking for the marginal revenue um, at 10 items, this is actually the money I will get, I will receive for selling the 11th item. The marginal revenue for the, at, at 10 is actually equal to the money I get for selling the next item. Okay, we calculate marginals, marginal revenue, marginal cost, marginal profit, by taking the derivative of the original function, revenue, cost, or profit. So here I'm trying to find the marginal revenue function, which is just asking me to find the derivative of the revenue function. And then it's asking me to find the marginal revenue when x equals 15, which actually means the money I'll get for selling the 16th item. Also, the thing you should know is that marginal revenue, marginal calculations, revenue, cost, and profit are actually estimates. Um, they're not exact figures for the money that you would get for selling, in this case, the 16th item, which is what B is asking us. So let's look at, at um, the first derivative. So the marginal revenue, again, is equal to the derivative of the revenue function. The derivative, remember when we have a sum of two functions, we can take the derivative of each piece. So we have this first piece, which is just 10x. The derivative of that is 10. The second piece is a quotient, so we have to follow the quotient rule. The derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over the denominator squared. Multiplying this out and simplifying, we get this function here, 10 plus 500, um, all divided by the quantity of 3x plus 5 squared. <clears throat> Notice B is asking us to find the marginal revenue when x equals 15, so we're just going to plug 15 into this equation and solve. It's a very simple calculation, and we get, uh, be careful with this, it's not um, 10 and 1 fifth. When it's in this form, it looks like a fraction, and a lot of uh, folks will leave this in fraction form. But remember, when you're dealing with word problems, to think about the context. And revenue is a, is a function of money. So I don't say I'm going to spend 10 and one fifth dollar. I say I'm going to spend $10.20, or $10.20 per unit. Um, I'd rather actually see you put this as a dollar sign and then per unit. <clears throat> so again, recall that. Um, the marginal revenue of 15 estimates the revenue from the sale of the 16th flash drive in this example.